So, what do you know about Freemasonry? He has his friends and I have my friends, but uh, you know, but we get on together well. Yeah, I'm a bit of, I think I'm a bit of an adrenaline junkie, really. Yeah, um, <laughs> to say the least. Occasionally we uh, take a Subaru Impreza on the track. Uh, Sam knew that I was a Freemason, but he didn't really know a lot about it. And so I basically said to him, well, why don't you go join and see what it's like? And so he did. It's fun being a Freemason because you get to do stuff that you wouldn't normally do. You know, you're, you're in a society, uh, it's a fraternal society and everyone's really nice to you and you all sort of get together and you have a laugh and there's no preconceptions about because you're young, you know, you're this or you're that. They treat you as an equal and it's, it's great that you've got, you know, people from different age groups, young Masons and old Masons together. I have a view that uh, life is very short. You don't get much time to encompass everything perhaps you want to do in a lifetime. Don't go too fast, because you come off. Oh, he's stuck. Oh, and here he comes, he's coming back at him. I've been in Freemason for 31 years. I make sure I commit a lot of time to my family. Uh, a lot of the lodge time is in the evenings or at weekends. Um, and I won't s sacrifice time from my family for Freemasonry. We have a saying, it's uh, family first then work, and then uh, Freemasonry. Um, it shouldn't be detrimental to our, 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 our family life or our working life. And I make sure um, I balance it very well. I was born and raised in Gloucester. It's a small city in the southwest of the UK. My mum's Spanish, my father's English. I'm gonna try and get a really good tackle in. I spoke to my friend and asked about it. He spoke to me in great depth, gave me an insight into Freemasonry, and uh, I thought, that sounds good, that's something I want to be a part of. The groups of people that you are with, uh, it's, it's called a lodge, and the lodge is just basically a group of friends, young, old, rich, poor, we're all just men that are just having a good time, and people that in life I probably would have passed in the street never even spoke to, never even exchanged comments, thoughts, or sort of life stories. I ran uh, various businesses, a construction company, and partner in a recruitment company, and the part of the business that I prefer the most is the Art Behind Bars and Break the Chain, which is a prisoner rehabilitation scheme. As this is work that I've done previously before being a Mason. Being a Mason has given me the motivation, skills to, to, to do what I'm doing and continue it. I'm Stephanie Chambers, uh, Alistair's wife. Tonight we're going to a Freemasons ladies' night. Initially, before he joined, obviously there was a time where we were discussing it, which was nice, he involved me in. Um, and we discussed it, we looked at things. I was concerned it might take up a lot of his time because we, we did, were short of time, five children. The business is, it's uh, quite a busy household. But actually it hasn't. You look at why Freemasonry has been successful. I think it's much more to do with the common desire to behave properly, to look after each other and uh, enjoy each other's company. And, and all that naturally leads to charity. But Freemasonry wasn't set up originally for charity. It's just been a completely natural byproduct of it. I can give you an illustration that with the Philippines hurricane, it gave £50,000 nearly on day one to the Red Cross. And the fact that it can react so quickly to these disasters is of enormous benefit to the charities which are the recipients. A charity is really important to me. Um, I've, my, my grandmother's been disabled since she was 18. And so it means, you know, it means a lot to be able to help other people. Um, and I like, I like to get involved as much as I can um, through my lodge and by myself, for example. Last year I did the Movember charity and th I mean, there's a lot of things that we do through the lodge as well in, in you know, we, we decide who we're going to give money to for what purposes. The RMP 
Ruby Ivor set up in 1842. We cater for dementia care, residential care and nursing care. Today we are making fairy cakes. Sugar in with your margarine. We have quite a bit of fun here one way and another. They're all very different, the people living here, and they all come from different backgrounds. Freemasonry is very much an extended family. When I had to finally give up my flat, that was the worrying part. Where am I going to end? When I saw this room, I thought, oh, it's big. Oh, it's lovely. And from that day onwards, yeah. I've kind of come to life again, so. Are we looking after you well? Oh, <laughs> they call me Mrs. Giggler. I know. <laughs> My wife had a serious allergic reaction. I raced her to A&E and they had to resuscitate her. An incredibly frightening experience. As a thank you, we thought, is there something we can do, particularly to help A&E, and particularly to help children who find themselves in such a frightening environment? I discussed that with my Masonic Lodge, and we came up with the idea of TLC, the simple idea of using teddy bears to take out the stress of a visit to A&E. Coming to a place like this is quite strange to them, quite stressful. Teddy bear, soft teddy bear, always softens the blow. You got babies coming in crying and you do everything that you could possibly do. You can pick any colour. When you see their faces, when you give them a teddy bear, it cuts down the, the assessment time. Just so you can just take your observations, heart rate, and it just makes them feel better. As soon as you give your teddy to a child, you know, that brings a smile to their face. Most children name the teddy straight away. One guy this morning, young chap, called his teddy hula hoop. So, that was cool. <laughs> we all have the same interests, which is helping other people and an interest in the history of Freemasonry, which has brought us all together. Since I became a member, it's been absolutely clear that history is extremely important. Freemasons Hall in Covent Garden, our headquarters, was built as a monument to those who died in, in the First World War. The building is open to the public, as indeed are virtually all Masonic buildings throughout the country. We use the building at Covent Garden, our headquarters, for multiple purposes. Is Freemasonry right for everyone? Um, I would say yes, as long as you don't carry your preconceptions with you. Because th there's, there's a lot of people who, who have a certain way of thinking towards Freemasonry which is based on nothing. But if you, if you open your mind to it and experience it, then absolutely it's for everyone. Everyone likes to have friends, everyone likes to help other people. It's not about what all the people have done in the past, what you're doing now, it's about what people are going to be doing in the future. There are no political links, in fact it's actually banned of in a lodge to talk about religion or politics, as those are the two main things that people have such different opinions on. Regardless of how hectic your life is, you can put in and take out what you want to. And that, that's what I really enjoy. That's what I like about Freemasonry. It's given me more confidence, you know, confidence in, in my work and in, in other, other aspects of my life. You, you listen to people more, you're more open-minded. You do really become a better person. For me, the value and teachings of Freemasonry have made me the man I am today. I think the one thing that a new person coming into Freemasonry can gain is a perception as to how they should behave towards this world in general. So, what do you know about Freemasonry? <laughs>